Hey y'all, how's Easter? How are you enjoying the Easter and the Easter break? And hope you're enjoying no matter what you do. And also to all religions, I hope that you are all blessed and celebrating uh, your events and uh, my blessings go out to you. Okay, um, well, I kind of thought I knew how to start this tube, um, but in a way I kind of don't, but I'll give it a go, hey, because um, I was only thinking last night about things when you see things happening in society um, about what's important and what isn't important and I think you know a lot of people tend to think that food for thought okay food for thought is um, where you just think about something that you'd like or you put it on the back burner and it's not important and you don't give any certain degree of thinking about it because everybody thinks that you know food for thought is just something uh, non-important you know um, in a thought and as I said with what's happening in society and with especially the uh, vaccine rollouts and the mishaps that are happening um, with the completion of it um, I think a lot of people tend to give food for thought not really the certainty of um, prioritising that thought because a lot of people know that um, there's trouble getting the vaccine so for people that are wanting the vaccine they're finding it hard they can't get an appointment or it's one thing or it's another or there's not uh, there's nothing available or nothing's been sent by the government and the vaccines are short so people tend to think well food for thought okay a lot know it's there, but uh, and there's a certain degree of people in society that won't have it because of the fear of, whether it's of their health, or um, one would say their paranoia, or what they think of it, or their uh, ethical views upon the vaccines and how it's made, and even religion, religious views. Um, so that's all got to play a big factor in things. So that percentage of people is you know, food for thought. They kind of, they know it's there, but they're not really, they they haven't made any real certain degree of decision. They only think it's, well, it's there, it's, it's good, but th that's as far as it goes. And then, as I said, you've got the other people that are, are really trying to get on board with getting vaccinated and whatever else and getting frustrated, and they prioritise that food for thought of vaccines um, as being important. And it is. So, you know, that's another factor and a percentage of people that think like that too. And then the other percentage of people um, tend to, I think, uh, aren't aware um, with food for thought on the vaccines that they've given any consideration to it. They just say it's there, yes. Um, and a lot of people aren't aware because they say, well, when it's our turn, we'll have it. And a lot of people aren't aware because, see, a lot of uh, a certain amount of people also think there's side effects and what will happen if I have it? Uh, will I get side effects? Will I end up dying? Case, uh, case there are. The scenarios go on, they're endless with food for four, for there, the vaccines. And that's... Uh, uh, mind-boggling because uh, within that thought of food for thought it doesn't only mean that it's a desire or a want or it's a, a, you know it's it's you've got to put a certain amount of thinking to it to that thought in food food for thought it means many things of course it does but a lot of people take that lightly and they shouldn't and uh, that's where I find uh, that a lot of people now, because they're faced with the thought of the vaccines and what's happening, 
and all the complications and the concerns and will there be enough uh, vaccines? Just a moment. Sorry, my cat has caught a lizard. I'll be back. Oh, I'm back. Yes, my cat. It did catch a lizard, so I had to cut it short there and stop the, the tube. So forgive me, but I am back. I can't handle my cats getting lizards, as I, I say. I love all uh, creatures, great and small. But anyway, back to where I was at. Look, you know, uh, yeah, food for thought. So, you know, a lot of people tend to uh, take that lightly and what it means. And as I said, it does mean a lot of things, but... Basically, you should be giving that, um, as I said, the vaccine is who for thought, okay? It's there, and it should be something that you put a, a, a certain amount of uh, thought into it, you know, not just thinking and then dismissing it. So, you know, that's a big thing, and uh, I think uh, the government, um, a lot of people tend to think this vaccine is um, a beacon of hope. And it is supposed to be a beacon of hope, okay? And the government is supposed to be a beacon of hope. They're supposed to be a beacon of hope. People look towards that. Now, to me, a beacon of hope is something that protects you, warns you, uh, supports you, guides you. And at the moment, I don't feel the government is being a beacon of hope. And I don't think they're, um, you know, introducing the vaccine to be a beacon of hope. Um, and a lot of people now tend to look at the government with the rollout and, as I said, a beacon of hope. And this rollout was supposed to be a beacon of hope so people could, with food for thought, think, well, I put a certain amount of thinking about this, what the vaccine means to me what it's supposed to do. Uh, you put a, a lot of effort in the thinking of who purport to go with a beacon of hope and have that so that the vaccine was meant to be rolled out successfully and people look towards that as a beacon of hope. And unfortunately, it's been uh, disappointing for a lot of people and for the nation itself um, to think that we're not even near close of that. And a lot of people now are putting food for thought into the thinking, well, is there going to be um, uh, enough dosage for the second round of the vaccinations? Is there going to be enough for when you need your booster shots within six to eight months? Is there going to be vaccines available then? There's so much that the government is supposed to introduce and have this vaccine rollout as a beacon of hope so people can be reassured and say, well, yeah, I don't have to wait for three or four months up the track to be certain of or to be informed of if there is enough of vaccines or boosters or, or this, that and all the other. You know, the government hasn't done that. They haven't even completed the first stage of the rollout. So the beacon of hope is getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer because a lot of people have put thought, food for thought, with the vaccines, what it means, what happens to them, is there side effects, um, what it means for them to do that. And the government hasn't, I don't think, realises that without putting all these measures, important measures, into being a beacon of hope for the nation, that they should put things in place first for it to be that and establish that, and they haven't done that. They, they have not pri prioritised people that weren't and aren't uh, vaccinated. And the thing is that for the government to be that beacon of hope, they've got to do things like they should have, first off, um, 
you know, with the vaccines, it should have been a rollout to all the public and all the hospitals in the nation uh, to have where people were vaccinated, uh, the nurses, the doctors, the people that work in the health industry, from cleaners to, to cooks, you name it, to safeguard everything there so, you know, uh, that beacon of hope could be successful and people knew when they went to hospitals hospitals, or, or, or so forth that their health wasn't being put at risk. You know, because society looks for the health industry when they all go, you go to the hospital, you tend to think that you're going there for your health and people are healthy and they can help you. So it's offsetting when people go to the hospital and find that they're getting infected because people within that, which is supposed to be a beacon of hope, all hospitals are, you know, find that they've let that down. They're not supported by the government you know, um, they're not protected, they're not warned, they're not safeguarded. And people then get a, a lesser expectation. And it's sad because then their views and their thoughts upon that start to get bitter and, 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 and they lose hope. And that's a sad thing because then the nation comes on board that if we can't have places that are a beacon of hope, like, all, as I said, all hospitals, then where can we feel safe? Where can we go? What can we do? And the same as the people that work in that industry must be mind-boggled and think, well, why weren't we all vaccinated? Why is, is this? Why were not the, you know, the government prioritising the people that were supposed to be vaccinated? And I mean, I'm not excluding the old. The old, yes, are important, but for the old to be healthy and happy and looked after, the people that look after them have got to be vaccinated. They've got to, they, they, you know, so the prioritising of how they've done it and who they've done it with is, is wrong. They're not going to succeed if they had a look at all the countries around the world and give examples of places and so forth that has been successful to find that they did it in main public places, hospitals, halls, um, you know, places that were of importance, beacons of hope. And the rollout has been more successful in countries than others. At the moment, Oz is not doing so good. It's, it's very poor. I mean, you know, the government says they're doing good, they're a beacon of hope, we're, we're growing all the time with this, we're learning. Sorry everybody, I seem to be having complications with my uh, camera. But anyway, uh, excuse me, what I was saying is that, yeah, so the government is not being a beacon of hope. They're not rolling out where they should prioritise. So people now with food for thought, as I said, with the vaccination, a lot of people are giving a lot of conscious thought to thinking about the vaccines and what it happens and what happens and what it means to them and what it means to the nation, basically. So for the government to be a beacon of hope, they've got to do that. They've got to roll out. They've got to prioritise the people that are most important. And then from there, it's like a pyramid, isn't it? You know, you go down and you go down the chain and the government's not doing that. So. Where's the beacon of hope? Where's the hope there? It's not happening. It's getting dimmer by the minute. And just to think that also, that um, with the vaccine, uh, you, you, it's been told that you have to wait a certain amount of time to get the second uh, jab. Um, but they haven't really said, and a lot of people now tend to think with the food for thought, is that going to happen? I mean, you know, they're prioritising that. They're thinking about that more now than ever. It's not just on the back burn, oh yeah, that's good, it might happen or, or whatever. A lot of people now are getting toey about that and they're giving more thought to that because they're looking at the government saying, right, you're our beacon of hope, this is what we expect from you, so what's going to happen? And 
as I said, the government uh, is not doing the greatest at the moment. You've got to be, a, they've got a lot, they've got to prioritise who they're vaccinating, uh, where they're vaccinating and what's happening for it to be successful. And I don't think through the GPs, uh, you know, your local doctors doing it. I think one thing that would help uh, the beacon of hope, the government, is to have where people, if they are, because it's food for thought, a lot of people are thinking, well, if I have this vaccination, will it harm me? Will I get side effects? What will happen? So, you know, for uh, that to be successful, perhaps maybe they're working with the local doctors that everybody that comes for vaccinations and so forth, once it's down the chain, uh, after prioritising the people that really need to be vaccinated and vaccinated the second time and also to have, you know, the thought, who thought once again, you know, that they're going to get a booster because you do need a booster. Uh, within six to eight months of even having your two jabs. So that's another thing, that's food for thought. So, you know, they've got to realise that and have where people uh, can get a, a printout at their local doctors stating what medication they're on, if there's any uh, complications, case or are, case or are, and then that they can take when it's their turn with their, you know, and say, well, they are, uh, before I'm vaccinated, you ought to check that. And then from there, they, they're safeguarded. So their food for thought and what they've given in such depth of uh, thought about for that, not dismissing it lightly, they've realised, well, that does mean important. It's important for me to find out before I do that. So allowing that and having that print out, people go, all right, well, I'll check that before you do are vaccinated. So you have peace of mind, the government has peace of mind, and uh, that's one little thing that can help for Beacon of Hope. And so there, I'll wrap that up because as you know, you know, food thought means so many other things, you know, you tend to take that lightly, that saying food for thought, you know, but really with this and the vaccines, you can't. You've got to really give thought to that because, you know, it's not just, as I said, dismissing it lightly and um, for the government to be a beacon of hope and to be successful as a beacon of hope with this vaccine rollout they've really got to come out with their prioritizing things that are most important for it to be successful you know going down the chain prioritizing so that's a good thing my camera is playing up everybody so I will actually try really keep it short so if it goes in between of being a little bit where you think that I've clipped in well I have because something's wrong with my camera as I said but uh, before I finish remember you know like winners coming on uh, you know it's coming on quicker uh, you know now uh, you know and well it's yeah it is it's it's got flu season and a lot of people have got the flu and they're sick and there's a lot of coughs and whatever else around now with the the um, mutant strains that are around on this virus okay so remember that um, you know God forbid to think that there would be a new mutant strain uh, formed out of the UK Brazil and South African variant um, God forbid but with the flu season, you can't help but to wonder what's in the air and if that's a possibility. You know, with, uh, you get flu, you get bronchitis, influenza, ammonia, case ra, and um, so you've got to be aware of this sort of thing because it is coming on, um, you know, really quick and uh, it's concerning. So, and remember, you've got to have, and I, I do now, I, I don't dismiss it lightly. I always assess where I go, which is still important to me, and I think should be for everybody, but a lot of people aren't on board, and the government said you can do virtually what you want, so it's up to your discretion. But remember, your masks, okay, are very important, and sanitizer. I'm not a nut on this. I just think it does matter, and it will matter in the next cupping, cu next couple, next, do, 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 do next couple of weeks okay so you know and uh, you know from yeah for the next couple of weeks and then you'll see a uh, spike of flus and whatever else and god forbid there'd be a new mutant strain 
out of these variants that you don't know. But anyway, food for thought, as I said, you know, is a very important thing to this vaccine rollout. Beacon of Hope, government, come on board with everything because it's really important for you to be that. You've got to actually shine the light. You've got to get stronger. You've got to get all your prioritising correct and right. And then it will work. But anyway, look, another thing, if you, um, you know, are experiencing psychological or physical abuse, reach out to your networks, support services in the UK, America, and if you're watching this in other parts. Hey, everybody. I had to do the last little bit of my uh, tube um, because it was deleted. So, but anyway, as I was saying, like, subscribe and comment. Um, and my four codes, they are respect, dignity, honour and integrity. They'll serve you well and faith, of course. And uh, until next time, see y'all. See y'all.